Uh, if you use GNOME, let's just open a folder. I already have I already have a folder open. Um, actually, no. Over here would be best. Look, go to places, removable media. Huh? Right here. As you know, the, everything in this uh, menu right here, from in this middle section, the top section is like common shit. And your bookmarks, the middle sections, common computer shit. Uh, anyway, any most of the stuff in this menu from here to here, um, you will see in your open file dialog in Nautilus. For example, if you're using uh, Firefox, see all these things right here are the same things you see in your places menu. I'm sure you already know that. I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. I point that out to bring to your attention under the. In my case, it's under removable media. There's a four gigabyte media. Now, if I reboot my computer, it's going to say four gigabyte encrypted data. I'm not rebooting right now because I'm recording and I don't feel like splicing video. I already have an encrypted drive, though, an 80 gigabyte encrypted data drive, and it shows it right here 80 gigabytes encrypted data. If I want to access that the old school way, I just go through the command line, get, find out its device name, like dev sda3 or some shit. And I'd, I'd use crypt setup lux open to open it and give it a device alias and then use the mount command to mount it to a directory in the file system. That's the old school way. The new school way is you click on the damn thing and enter your password. It's fucking lovely. I love it. Check it out. And check it out. Lux opens it and the system mounts it all at the same time. you got to give it just a second. You better work. You just worked for me the other day. I actually just seen this the other day and uh, was curious, and so I clicked on it and found out it, it actually does everything for you. Eventually, what the hell's the problem? It took a second last time, but it, I don't. I didn't think it took this long. But then again, I'm screencasting and transcoding another video at the same time. So that's probably slowing it down. Uh, let's check and make sure it's not open on another desktop. No, it's not. All right, I don't know what the hell happened, but it's supposed to open it, and it did the other day. Let me let me see what this. Forget password immediately. Remember until you log out. All right, let's try this again. Actually, let me give a fake password just to see if... Uh... And as you can see right here, if you can read this message, it says it contains encrypted data on partition one. As you can see, I didn't, form, I didn't make the entire drive a corrupt... Unable to mount 80 gigabytes encrupted data. D-bus error. Did not receive a reply. Uh... All right, as you can see, it was going to mount it. It changed its mind. I don't know why. Uh, fake password should give you a password error, but evidently we can't access it anyway, so it might not. Um, if your password's incorrect, you should at least receive some kind of error. I I'm sorry, I can't show you the rest of this. Um, I might not have the UDEV service started. If I, I go through when I first install a system to speed it up, I'll go through these services and disable all unnecessary services. And I used to disable UDEV because I didn't know what the fuck it was. It, its description is shit. It doesn't tell you what it does. Uh, it, it's just talking about moving persistent rules here and there. Uh, UDEV is actually works with AutoMount. To it's like a de device discovery uh, service, and it it creates rules for what to do upon the discovery of devices and the ac and attempting. Attempted access to those devices. So you want to leave UDEV running. Uh, and it is running. So, um, what about auto mount? I don't even have auto mount. It might have something to do with it. Let's check this out. Uh, yum, install, auto mount. Man, I could have swore I had auto mount. I might have reinstalled, I might have installed Fedora 10 after I installed that on Fedora 9. I could have swore I installed that. And there's unfortunately not a way to refresh these services. 
So I'll probably have to close this and open it back up. Anyway, you could probably you could pretty much cut this video off right now. You already know how to do it from the command line, and you already know how to do it from the um, GUI. You you just click on it and enter your password from the GUI. But that's after you've rebooted. I, I don't think it'll uh, it, the system can see it as what it is until you reboot. Um, I'm going to keep recording though. You can, like I said, you can end this. This is pretty much the end of it. But I'm going to keep recording uh, because I'm going to mount it with the command line here in a moment, just to show you one more time how to do that. Um, but I want to wait first till auto mount installs. No package auto mount available. I spelled it correctly. All right. So I don't know what the hell's going on with that, but we're going to do this. Um, I know that's a hard drive of its own. I don't. I just don't remember. Okay, list dev. That is SDA one, SDA two, SDA three, SDA. It's probably. Fuck. I don't know. Let me. Like I said, if you're not sure, open Gported. That's a graphical way to look and confirm at uh, what you're about to edit before you start editing your hard drives. FDB. That's my movies. SDC. Unknown, that's it. Unknown, 80 gigabytes. There it is. 80 gigabytes, an unknown file system. That is my encrypted one. And then SDI is the, uh, what you call it. All right, so anyway, I'm going to type, um, and you probably don't want to, you probably want to create a, part you probably don't want to do like I just did on the flash drive. You actually want a partition on it because I think that might affect the way the system can recognize it. So even if you reboot, I, the system might not recognize it as a device with encryption and stuff like that and set it up automatedly uh, for you because there's no, uh, probably no, I don't know, because the entire device has no partition. It, it The whole damn thing is one encrypted device, um, which I shouldn't have done. I kind of, like I said, I skipped a step and I shouldn't have. Anyway, uh, what the fuck did I just say that was? Let's try this again. SDC, right? Yeah. Okay. SDC. So we're going to go crypt setup dev S SDC1. Oh, I'm sorry. Crypt setup lux open dev SDC1. We're going to open it as uh, data dash 80 GB. You can, you can give it any damn name you want. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll give it X. I'm going to call it X. And the passphrase. Command successful. Now, it automatically mounted it. <laughs> I didn't even have to tell it to mount. It automatically mounted it. Um, so evidently, GNOME is having a problem working with Lux right now. Evidently, something about GNOME and something about... Uh, Lux is not working together as they were before, but they're meant to. That, you're supposed to be able to access it like that. So anyway, that's how you do that. And I'm going to go ahead and close it back up. Uh, but if it did not do that automatically, uh, we would type mount, because as you can see by typing list dev mapper, we have a device in there called X, a block device. So we would type uh, mount dev mapper slash X. I'm sorry, I used an uppercase X, two, and then we give it whatever we want to mount it to, like in my case, data Y. And then we just hit enter, and then it would be mounted right here to data Y. Um, it's already mounted, so I can't do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and close.